Okay, well, I'm Carolyn Kelly, and um, I'm supposed to be talking about advanced servos and what that means. You may find out or not. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wrote this, and I've been thinking about this for a long time, but my mind is totally blank. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's such a funny term, advanced urbanism. What does that mean? Oh my gosh, you know? It's, it's, um, we can go in either of directions, and we probably will. So I'm not that. Um, we have, we have a history behind us of many wonderful, um, heritages. You know, urban, you probably know urbanism is probably the oldest tradition of healing in the world. Um, but it's not what it, you know, what it, what the world wants us to make it today is not what it really is. You know, and that's what we have to do is go back to what it really is. So we have the athletic system, which is an amazing There's two more chairs. Maybe you're just in luck. It's great. But we can, you want to, you want to chat together? Uh, it's we okay. Can, we can move on. No, it's really okay. <laughs> <laughs> they go together. So. <laughs> 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 it's great to be here with you. know, it's just such a lovely energy. Do you feel that? It's all about energy, right? It's yeah. all about energy. That's what we're going to talk about today. It's all about energy. It's not about substance. It's about energy. So whether you talk about the Ayurvedic system, or the Chinese system, or our kind of lit, um, Western system. <laughs> um, it really is about the energy of the earth and the energy that comes emanates from us in our hearts. You know, and, and Western medicine would love to have a sort or even just um, um, what happens today in, you know, in the Western world would have us. <laughs> Come on in. There's room. There's always room. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhat familiar with like the Chinese herbal system or the Ayurvedic system or our Western herbal system, which is not really much of a system, because we've been, you know, uh, programmed by um, our minds um, and by what we think is supposed to be real. And I just have to tell you this. <laughs> right. Okay, so. Um, Basically, what I want to say to you is this. Our mind can pick up maybe 10% of what is possible for Israel. And all of our education is based on that 5 to 10%, really 5 to 10% of knowledge, of knowledge, book knowledge is what I'm talking about. Not only do our schools really only teach from that, but our universities, come on in, our universities teach that perspective. This is, this is um, Newtonian physics, um, where everything is seen as um, a thing, you know, and, and rather than an energetic source, an energetic source behind the thing. That's what our kids get in school every day, you know, that's what our universities teach still. That's what our doctors are trained in. Yeah. I had a client this week that went to that one because she had lung to arthritis and she went to a specialist. And he said to her, there is no correlation, no correlation between the food you eat and your disease. <laughs> Dartmouth, between what? 
correlation between food, she ate, um, disease. Yeah. Okay, no correlation. This is still how many physicians believe. Can you, I mean, I mean, I know that, but it's still, every time I hear it, particularly in my own state, the people that I am working, you know, going to be working with this one, it just blows me away. You know, we have got to get beyond that. Which means we have to not buy into the system, right? How many don't ask the name? Oh my gosh, you know, it's just, yeah, I mean, we just have to be so careful, really. We have to be really careful about what we watch. Because we have been brainwashed since the time we were born. Truly, we have been brainwashed since we were little. And we get caught in that, what I want, I won't call, I'll tell you what it means, but it's the most field of society as it is, you know, acceptable, being acceptable as society is. And then we get into, um, well, herbalism, okay, so um, I guess I have to know all the, all the properties of herbs and what they do. And that's overwhelming. I don't know what you've got for a write-up for this, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. I mean, we have to know everything, and we can't know everything. But we have to know everything. You know, I study every day. But I'm not saying that you're not supposed to use your mind. I, I, there's always something I'm studying online, always. And, and online is probably the, a good place to get the most, the newest information, but you still have to be careful where you get it, because if it's done by a... Um, you know, a company that is promoting Bacopa, and then you have to sort of figure out is this really true, or is this what the company wants you to believe, and you know, are these herbs that they put together you know, really the right herbs for you, um, or is it just the cheapest herbs that you, you know, you just, you have to really question it all, because unfortunately we live in a society that wants money. Now, my belief is as we transition and we are transitioning more than that, as we are transitioning more. Um, and, and my belief is that money is not going to rule us much longer. I don't know what that's going to look like. Oh, we have to try to say it's going to be better than it is now because uh, you know, money has just, uh, just distorts our values and you know, makes us think about money instead of. Money is depression. Right, right, instead of, you know, what am I doing? You know? Are you coming from your head or are you coming from your heart? One of the things that I've always done in my business, when I see people, I hate to to equate people with money. I just, you know, it just doesn't work for me. So I have a basket and I deal with it. And it might be a little silly game, but, but to me, it works better than having to say, okay, you owe me, you know, $57 a month. That's what it has to be. Because we need to see people as beautiful beings that are evolving, and that's what I want to do. That's what I do want to do with my work. So when I see people, I um, there are many ways that you can look at what a person needs. Probably I should give you this one. I'll go to some, but no, this this will give you some a bit of a summary of at least what I intend to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll keep one just so I So in, the, in our past, we as herbalists used our intuitive knowing. I mean, that's the only thing we had was our intuitive I hope they're not doing I have to see one of the other people We can maybe do more, make more. Can somebody yeah, in here with that help us share? Okay. And then maybe we can make some, or I will send them to you on, you know, online. Yeah. They go together. They <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So here's the good thing and a not a, and, a, and, a, and a difficult thing. Our as we evolved as human beings, 
we had to learn how to discern or to judge because if we ate a plant that was poisonous to kill us, right? So we learned judgment. And we've taken it to the extreme today, right? Mm -hmm. you know, okay. But it was an important thing that we learned how to discern good from not good. And on the third dimension, which is where we still live, we need to know, you know, there's this positive and this negative. That is what we see. You get that? How you know you we can strive all we want for positive, but you will also um, if you're still living in the third dimension, you will also get the opposite of that. That's just how we live in the dimension. A, a duality. We have both sides. No polarity. So we have sun and we have moon. We have light, we have dark, we have good, we have evil. That's the way it is on the third dimension. We hope um, we you know, we don't hope. We I I know and have lots of good evidence about this that we are moving beyond that. But right now that's where we are in that third dimensional reality still. And the exciting thing is that as we move we will move beyond that so that we don't have that as our continual um beyond that. But anyway, we, we started as intuitive beings. We had to learn that. And then what happened is we needed to know through our intellect. So we so we had to learn things and we had established schools and, you know, apprenticeships and whatever, but you know, schools and universities and they got us to really think through the mind. So our minds became the most important thing for us. And it still is true and we all get trapped in that. Oh well, what does the doctor think? Oh well, what does that ad say? Or to read this person, I have to look at this, this situation um, and research it this way. And I, again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't research, but there's so much more. Because like I said, and this is from Bruce Lipton, but many other um, wonderful beings that are on the planet today. He's a, um, he's a biologist and um, amazingly passionate man. He uh, writes about epigenetics and how we do not um, we're not controlled by our genes, but our genes, we control our genes, mm -hmm. which is a, a really wonderful thing. But that takes us out of that place of thinking that we can lay, lie down and things just happen to us if we keep on that way. Mm -hmm. We do have power and choice, and we can choose. And that takes consciousness. So that's what this whole thing is about, is being conscious. But anyway, he's the one that first said, at least what I heard, that first said, um, the level, if, if you, most of what you know is in your subconscious mind. And your subconscious mind really rules you. Now that's much deeper than you can even imagine. I mean, it is so, it's so very deep. Here's another way to look at it. Other statistics. The conscious mind picks up about 15 bits of information a second, the conscious mind. Okay. That's what you go to school with, that's what you're listening to me with right now, 15 bits of information a second. The subconscious mind, which lives in you, and in your body, it lives in your body, and we're going to tap it, that's what we're going to do, we're going to learn how to tap Tap your subconscious mind, you're open to 15 million bits of information. 15 million bits of information. In other words, it helps you tap the universal consciousness. Mm -hmm. I get chills. We can tap all the ifs. We don't need an expert to tell us. Now that doesn't mean we don't need to study so we know what the copa, which is really new to most of us, is, or um, Japanese not believe in how to use that as a reserve talk. You, you have to know. I mean, you have to have some kind of place to start, right? So you, you've got to have something. So you can do the Chinese system. This is, I found this wonderful little chart, which I'll, <coughs> which I'll pass out. Primary correspondence is within the five element theory, which is just a nice um, beginning of five element theory. And, and that there, it's wonderful. And this is thousands of years old. Thousands of years old. So, and do you think that they learned by just their cognition thousands of years ago? Of course not. But they learned by looking at your, the color of your, your cheeks or 
your eyes and, and what they saw when they, when they looked at you and what the light force was. How did I sense the, out, the light force? Right? And that's what you as advanced herbalists <coughs> need to do is to be able to sense these things, these pieces, these, these bits of um, aspects for people. What, what is it that you sense in a person? You know, people will come in to me uh, still, and I'm sure this happens to you sometimes, what's the one herb I can take to, you know, to heal my <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis? <laughs> because we are so programmed as, um, as Western people to think of a pill. One thing, one pill to take. Herbalists cannot think that way. I often say when they say that, I say, do you just eat carrots? <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a this is a combination. This is, you know, what you want is um, is, is things that are a bunch of different herbs, and maybe not just herbs. Maybe flower essences, or homeopathic remedies, or essential oils, or a combination of all of those things. You know, and so the more you know and have experienced them, the more you can help people. Sometimes I think that one of the reasons we get sick or we get some kind of condition, whatever that is, is so that we go so thoroughly into it that we can help others with whatever that is. Yeah. So, and if you can begin to look at a condition that you have that way, rather than feeling like a victim to it, then you, it, all sorts of magnificent things can happen up to it. But it's how you, how you perceive, how you look at things. So <clears throat> the first thing I say about what, whatever you're doing as advanced herbalist um, is to know yourself. Really know yourself. Now I don't mean know yourself here. I mean know yourself. What what is it? And what makes you tick? And what fears do you have? And what um, frustrations do you have? Or what longings do you have? And where is your heart? You know, all of these things are just so so important, um, and so much more important than what you know as a clinical herbalist. And again, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's only one tenth of what you need to be looking at. So the rest is you and how you tap them and how you grow as as a human being. Because that's really your spirit here in body. You know, and so we need to be able to manifest that here, right, on this plane. Hi, uh, uh, is it already too late? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Not to sit way back there. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. So anybody have any um, questions or thoughts before?